Hi everyone, this is Kavya from Eduweka. Welcome to today's session on GitHub Basics. Before we begin, I'm going to brief you all about the agenda in today's session. So firstly, we will understand what are version control systems and the importance of them. We will then talk about what is GitHub and why do we need it. Also, we will address models used for collaborative development. Moving on, we will talk about remote repositories, fork and pull requests. We will also address GitHub flow and conclude the session on how GitHub is not just for developers. I hope you all are clear about what we will be addressing today. Now, if you like our videos, please don't forget to subscribe and press that bell icon to never miss the latest updates on the Edureka channel. Also, do check out our Edureka DevOps training certification. The link is given in the description box below. Now, let's move on to the first part of today's session. What are version control systems? So every time you make changes to your files or code, version control helps in recording the changes by keeping track of the modifications done to that particular file. There are three files, namely file A, file B and file C that the user is currently working on, as you can see on the screen. As the user keeps incorporating changes to these files, a different version of it will be stored over time. So version 2 is the snapshot of all the three files at that particular instant. So is version 3 and version 4. So this is what version control systems really do. They record changes over time in your files. Now that you know what version control systems are, let us be familiar with some of the terms that we will use more often throughout this session. The first most important one is a repository. A repository is simply a storage space for your project files. The next term is a distributed version control system. So a distributed version control system contains multiple repositories. Here each user has their own repository and a working copy. Some extremely popular distributed version control systems are Git and Mercurial. Now let's move on to the next part of the session, GitHub and its purpose. So what is GitHub? GitHub is simply an open source repository hosting service. It is, you know, sort of like a cloud for code. It hosts your source code projects in a variety of different programming languages and keeps track of the various changes that are made to every iteration. The github.com website also has additional functionality that extends the functionality of Git. Here it allows you to manage projects and coordinate with others on updates to code, text files and other files in your repository. GitHub also facilitates sharing your code with the world. Or you can also share your files with specific people if you need to work with a smaller group of people. That is if you want to work privately. There are several tools that GitHub offers that you can use to support collaborating on projects. The first one is GitHub pull requests. Pull request is a way that you or your colleague can suggest code changes to a repository. A pull request basically allows your collaborators to see exactly what items were changed line by line within your code. It allows the group of people working on the code to view, review and comment on the code line by line. So any changes that you incorporate to your project can clearly be also linked to issues that describe the need for those changes. So we'll move on to the second tool that is GitHub issues. Issues in GitHub are ways to document and discuss changes needed in a repository. Issues are also ideal for managing changes within a project. They are normally text and code that describe something that needs to be addressed in the repository. It could be related to something that needs to be fixed in your code or the current file that you're working on. So basically issues can be assigned to one or more people to work on, which makes them useful for project management. You can keep track of who's working on what items in the repository with the help of issues. Now let's move on to the third tool that is GitHub project milestones. There are other project management tools within GitHub that you can use to manage your project as it becomes more complex, including milestones and even Trello like project boards. So if you are working on a large project, you can create milestones, which can be used to group sets of related issues together. Milestones can have deadlines associated with them. The fourth and the last tool that we'll be discussing about is the GitHub project management tools. You can also use GitHub to manage an entire project or set of projects. So here you can set up boards that are similar to a tool like Trello to manage pull requests, milestones, and who is working on what with their associated deadlines. I hope you understood what is GitHub and the tools that GitHub uses to collaborate with others. Now let's move on and understand models for collaborative development. There are two primary ways people collaborate on GitHub. 
First one is the shared repository. The second one is fork and pull. So within a shared repository, individuals and teams explicitly designated as contributors with read, write, or administrator access. This simple permission structure combined with features like protected branches and marketplace helps team progress quickly when they adopt GitHub. Now for an open source project or for projects to which anyone can contribute, managing individual permissions can be sometimes challenging, but a fork and pull model allows anyone who can view the project to contribute. So what is a fork? A fork is a copy of a project under a developer's personal account. Every developer has full control of their fork and is free to implement a fix or new feature. Work completed in forks is either kept separate or is surfaced back to the original project via a pull request. So here maintainers can review the suggested changes before they're finally merged. Now let's move on and understand remote repositories. So I'm sure you must be aware that Git is a tool that helps you work on your project by creating local repositories on your personal computer. You can either push or pull changes off your file into your remote repository that is present on a platform like GitHub. GitHub's collaborative approach to development depends on publishing commits from your local repository for other people to view, fetch and update. So a remote URL is Git's fancy way of saying the place where your code is stored. That URL could be your repository on GitHub or another user's fork or even on a completely different server. You can only push to two types of URL addresses. That is the first one being an HTTPS URL. You can see the example on the screen. The second one is an SSH URL. Git associates a remote URL with a name and your default remote is usually called origin. Now I'll explain how to create remotes. You can use the git remote add command to match a remote URL with a name. For example, you type the following line in the command line, git remote add origin remote URL. So this associates the name origin with the remote URL. You can simply use the command git remote set URL to change a remote's URL. Now that we know how remote repositories work in detail, let us understand some basic commands that we use on GitHub. The first one is fork. A fork is a copy of a repository. Forking a repository allows you to freely experiment with changes without affecting the original project. Confused? Let me explain again. Forking in GitHub is a process of creating a copy of a complete repository to the user's GitHub account from another account. So when a user forks a repository, all the files in the repository are automatically copied to the user's account on GitHub and it feels like the user's own repository. So this process is extremely similar to copying a folder from one drive to another in a computer. The user is then free to use this repository either for their purpose or experiment with changes in the code. Through Git forking, the users can develop their own modifications to the code that belongs to someone else. This process does not have any effect on the original repository code that is also called as the upstream repository. So it is extremely important to know that Git forking through GitHub is a process that is only isolated to GitHub. This means that whenever a Git fork occurs, the repository and the code remains confined to the user's GitHub account. There is no effect on the local machine of the user or the involvement of Git in any of the process. So why do we need to use forking? Forking a repository on the GitHub is mainly done because of two purposes. The first one is to improve someone's code or software. Improving someone's code does not necessarily mean fixing the bugs and improving the execution time. Improving can be adding a new feature to the existing software, right? For example, if I navigate a repository and like the concept of the software, I have something else in mind that I want to add to the software. So I can fork the repository, develop the feature on my machine and simply send the changes to the owner of the repository. The second reason we can use forking is to reuse the code in a project. A user can also make use of git fork to fork the repository of another user to use it in their own project. The idea here is why to reinvent the wheel. The popularity of git is also because people add their code, project, modules, software, etc. on GitHub as a public repository. Now other people are allowed to use that open source code to their project which eventually helps them to save their time and efforts. Now let's move on and learn about the next command that is pull request. 
simple request let you tell others about changes you have pushed to a branch in a repository on GitHub. So once a pull request is open on GitHub, you can discuss and review the potential changes with collaborators and eventually add follow-up comments before your changes are finally merged into the base branch. For all of you all who are not aware of this, the project resides on a main branch called the master branch and there are several other branches that are created alongside to work with the master branch. So on GitHub, after the user initializes a pull request, you will see a review page that shows a high level overview of the changes between your branch, that is the compare branch and the repository's base branch. You can add a summary of the proposed changes, review the changes made by commits, add labels, milestones, assignees and also mention individual contributors or teams. So you can create a pull request to propose and collaborate on changes to a particular repository. These changes are proposed in a branch which ensures that the default branch only contains finished and approved work. So in the next part of the session, we will be discussing about GitHub Flow. So GitHub Flow is a lightweight branch-based workflow that is built around core Git commands used by teams around the globe. The GitHub flow has six steps, each with distinct benefits when implemented. The first one is create a branch. Topic branch is created from the canonical deployment branch, usually that is the main master branch, allow teams to contribute to many parallel efforts. Short-lived topic branches in particular keep teams focused and result in quick ships. The second one is add commits. Snapshots of development efforts within a branch create safe, revertible points in the project's history. The third one is open a pull request. Pull requests publicize a project's ongoing efforts and set the tone for a transparent development process. The fourth one is discuss and review code. Teams participate in code reviews by commenting, testing and reviewing open pull requests. Code review is at the core of an open and participatory culture. The fifth one is merge. So upon clicking merge, GitHub automatically performs the equivalent of a local Git merge operation. GitHub also keeps the entire branch development history on the merge pull request. The last one is deploy. Teams can choose the best release cycles or incorporate continuous integration tools and operate with the assurance that code on the deployment branch has gone through a robust workflow. People often think that GitHub is a platform solely made for software developers. But this is not entirely true. Yes, it's definitely mostly used by them to collaborate with their colleagues or team members when they work. But GitHub can be incorporated into other fields and projects. Let's discuss some of them. GitHub can be used for collaborative writing. Writing stories isn't something where collaboration comes to mind immediately. But if you have a project where writing benefits from collaboration, GitHub is definitely a great place to do that. The ease of revisions on GitHub helps the community make quick corrections to any issues they find and keep all project files in one collection. This is great not only for story writing, but also for editing legal documents. Of course, in that scenario, you will want to make sure that any changes made are actually correct and appropriate. The next is research. Because it's so easy to look into public repositories, it is also a great place to post about research. Collaboration is a vital part for effective research and posting those results on GitHub could make it a lot more easier. Others can also take your research and build from it for new discoveries. You can also have discussion threads in your repositories as GitHub can support discussions related to that particular research. The next field GitHub can be used is for blog writing. GitHub has a separate service called GitHub Pages where you can start your own blog. While not tied to GitHub's regular version control system, it is still created and run by GitHub. And it is legitimate because Barack Obama used GitHub Pages for his campaign blog. The next field that GitHub is used for is 3D modeling. GitHub has started rendering 3D models that are now stored in .stl files. Therefore, it is a lot easier now to share those modeling files with others and still benefit from GitHub's contribution, sharing and remixing features. GitHub does not have any 3D printing solutions, but it hosts project codes that are allied to the emerging area of 3D printing like Print Run. GitHub is also used for geographical data. Have you got a project that revolves around plenty of geographical data? You can easily use GitHub to represent this data as a map. That's right, you don't even have to make the map yourself. GitHub will take the data and do it for you. 
all you have to do is place the data inside a dot geo json file and use appropriate syntax with this we come to the end of today's session i hope you understood the github basics and how github is used for collaboration until next time thank you i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning